5200 carbon steel with custom heat treatment. Got the edge at 15 degrees per side freehand. It's got a convex edge though, and we have this guy at 10 thousandths behind the edge. What's significant here is that we're torquing into this African blackwood, which is just super gnarly on an edge. And we're at 66 Rockwell. So super high hardness for this material. A lot of knife makers scoff at something this hard, but they just don't understand the complexities of building a proper microstructure with this hardness that'll make it not brittle. What we're testing here is we're testing the edge stability of the steel. And what you could see here, if you have a very keen eye, is that we're able to have something this hard yet incredibly stable. And that's kind of one of the unique properties of 52100 is that it has super fine carbides. It only has 6% carbide volume, M3C, more complex iron carbide. It's uh, chromium rich. And what's fascinating about this steel is it's not the most aggressive edge or the longest cutting, but what it offers is extreme stability, especially if you could set up the microstructure properly to achieve this higher hardness, you're gonna get a lot of edge stability out of this stuff. So, a little preliminary testing here. Watch the cut. No chipping damage whatsoever, despite that very, very gnarly African black. Now, I thought it'd be interesting to contrast that edge stability testing with the same super thin edge geometry on a test that correlates more with shock resistance and impact toughness, raw impact toughness. And you can see the edge is sharp, same geometry, cutting a 16 penny nail. 15 degree per side convex edge with a 10 thousandths behind that edge. Way too thin. Way too thin to be cutting a nail. This is a 16 penny nail. And so let's just see what happens. You know, we've got 66 Rockwell here. And you know, a lot of knives I've tested like this, I mean, they just blow apart. You know, nothing usually survives. You know, it just causes a crack initiation down there at the edge and the whole thing just snaps in two from testing like this. So it should be interesting to see what we get. After chopping that nail, we saw that we got a big chip in there, but the geometry was just insane, right? We're about 100 thou at the stock, 3 degrees per side on the grind. It's a little convex to it, but looks flat to the eye. And then down here at the edge where it failed, it was just too thin for chopping a 16 penny nail. Uh, we had about 10 thou behind the edge of a 15 degree per side convex edge, so it's just nothing's going to survive. So, but to the lay person, if it doesn't succeed, then it sucks. Uh, but unfortunately, reality is that you need thicker geometry if you're going to chop through fucking nails. So, it just is what it is. I was very curious, though, to see what would happen if we took this knife at 66 Rockwell. And I'm just happy the thing didn't explode, you know, because usually I've done some, you know, nail chopping in the past on some nails. And I've had knives just just break right in half so yeah survived but we could probably try that test again and do it with a thicker geometry and it would succeed but uh, what are we testing at that point you know i was just curious to see what the hell was going to happen at thinner geometry and so i think the verdict is about the minimum geometry you can get away with for chopping a nail is i don't know maybe like 15 thousandths behind the edge and then from there you also have to be about I don't know, 20 degrees plus uh, to not have any significant damage. And freehand convexing helps because it'll be that much more uh, obtuse at the very tip of the apex from where it is sharpened at the shoulder. So cool stuff. Uh, we're going to thin this guy out and make him do a laser. Uh, I'm not going to make knives to chop nails at this current moment in time. Just more interested in making laser stuff because I think it's cooler. So yeah. So yeah guys, I think the key takeaways from this testing is that edge stability and raw toughness are completely different things. They get lumped in together, but these are different things. With edge stability, we want thin geometries and microstructures that can support that. But that's probably not conducive to raw shock toughness, where you probably want the microstructure to have some more give to it and give it the strength to keep it from rolling over with thicker geometry. And so it's kind of interesting because when you think toughness to the layperson, they think that it's just whatever doesn't break. Uh, but at the same time, what a lot of people probably want in their knives, because in my personal opinion, a knife is a verb to cut. It means to cut stuff. It doesn't mean to bludgeon stuff. 
Uh, so in my personal opinion, more people are probably looking for edge stability. They're looking for a knife edge that doesn't roll and doesn't chip with normal use. Uh, so by chasing just raw shock toughness, or you're chasing something that has a thicker geometry that is never going to necessarily chip, but at the same time, it's just, the performance is just not gonna be as good as it could be. So the conclusion is pick and choose what you want that knife to do. Uh, if you want it to cut really good and support thin geometry, you need to focus more on edge stability. If you need raw shock toughness, there's no getting around the geometry itself. You need to have thicker geometry and you need to have the heat treat microstructure uh, be a little bit more giving and make up for its lack of strength in that microstructure with the thicker geometry. But as we know, thicker geometry doesn't cut very good. So pick and choose, what's a knife for? In my opinion, knife is made to cut. So, all right. So the point here that I was just trying to make was that you can go thicker, you can get more durability regardless. Uh, one of the problems of having that softer microstructure we talked about that had a little more give to it was that you can't go thinner. It doesn't have the structural support to support anything thinner, so you're stuck. You, it relies on the thickness for its strength versus it's ride or die when you go hard. You know, you go hard, you go thin, it's ride or die in your microstructure. So I always thought that was just way cooler, you know, just a lot more of your expertise and things like that are being taken advantage of. Uh, when you go thinner, you then have to have your microstructure be your support, not just your geometry. But then the geometry has to be thin because you want the geometry to cut good, you know, it's pretty straightforward. So pretty cool stuff, 52100. Love this stuff, I'm gonna laser this guy out. You know, I'm not gonna leave it in nail chop mode. I totally could though, I mean, 20 degrees per side. 15 thou for a lot of people that'd be, probably be a perfect knife but you know I always noticed for me that there was never enough catering to people who know how to use their knives and everything is always watered down to the lowest common denominator and I like the idea of catering to people who know how to use their stuff and could appreciate something they can't get anywhere thinner knives harder knives woo that's what I'm talking about all right Ooh. Lastly, I would like to thank my Patreon supporters out there. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it.